Without question, my second favourite Tim Burton film is Beetlejuice. The first one is Sweeney Todd, for anybody who is interested. And Sweeney Todd's fantastic, great music by Sondheim. But there is no coupling greater than Tim Burton and Danny Elfman. And every song but one on the Beetlejuice soundtrack is, of course, from composed by Danny Elfman. And I have decided to start discussing a lot of Tim Burton's film soundtracks, and just film soundtracks in general, because it's an area of cinema that I never really focus on. It's one of my weak things, if, if, you, if you kind of think of it in a way that I am very focused on narrative and characters and that kind of development. While I, I notice the music, I don't always think about it, unless it's an actual musical. So I thought I'd invite discussions about some of these songs, but I have to point out, as you may have already noticed, I do not have a musical ear, I do not have the terminology or the knowledge to pick apart these songs and criticise them. So it's not really a review as such, it's more just an amateur's opinion about a soundtrack of a film that she absolutely adores. So I will go through the tracks and give some brief opinions and basically it's all really positive. There were a few weak links, a few things that I think could have been, well just they didn't work for me. Maybe in my kind of idiot's guide to music approach I need to understand certain things about what Elfman was thinking or what the intentions were and if that is the case and you are very musically minded please educate me. Feel free, I'm really keen to improve my knowledge and understanding of the composition of a score and you know all of the different aspects that go into that. This album starts off, believe it or not, with um, a song called Main Titles. As always, very enticing, a small flavour of what is to come, but doesn't really give too much away. With travel music, if you are watching the film for the first time, I doubt you would expect something this jolly and chipper. Not that I would say the film would suggest it would launch into full-on comedy horror straight away, but this is quite a merry, jolly song, and I really enjoy it. And then quite quickly with the book and obituaries, it gets a bit more daunting, a bit more ominous. There's a kind of lurking, uh, luring quality. Um, it's kind of luring you in, something's lurking in the background, you know it's there, you want to see what it is, and it pulls you closer, and then enter the family. And Enter the Family and Sam Wor Sam S Sandworm Planet, it's harder to say than you think, is certainly the most sorrowful, sorrowful to this point. Um, but then it becomes a little bit more jaunty. And I feel like that's a very strong mix throughout this album and is obviously perfectly in fitting with the film, is that when something feels quite scary, you also have a bit of merriment with it. And that's just, that kind of epitomises Beetlejuice and the comedy horror in general it's always ominous and mysterious but also a gaggle of laughs and that's absolutely the case here. With The Fly definitely sounds like something from a James Bond film. Saying that I've never seen James Bond but I'm of course aware of a lot of the songs uh, from it. I have no strong opinions about The Fly but I liked it. it you know I liked kind of the action and the pacing to it. On the flip side I have a lot of love for Lydia Discovers. I have to say Lydia is Lydia is actually probably my favourite Tim Burton character, more so than Mrs. Lovett. If we can call Mrs. Lovett specifically a Tim Burton character, obviously a creation of Thomas Peckett Prest. But Lydia is she was my introduction to Anora Ryder. I feel a strong affinity with the character. I absolutely adore her. This song is haunting, it's delicate, it's it's just right for Lydia. I feel like it is the, you know, the musical equivalent of her soul and bodies who she is. I absolutely love it. Then we have In the Model. Um, I love that scene, absolutely love that scene. But let's say I was listening to this album before watching the film, which I like to do sometimes because I like to visualise the scenes before seeing what's on screen. But it doesn't really work with instrumentals. Love the scene, the music, I'm not that bothered about. Uh, Juno's theme. I Juno's theme starts off quite slow, 
both in terms of speed and in terms of interest. Um, it does build up energy, and as it builds up energy and gains a bit more of momentum, I feel like it gets a lot more interesting. And it goes from a song that I can kind of take or leave to one that I really quite enjoy. It kind of reminds me of something from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Not a specific song. I can't work out why it's so... I mean, obviously, Danny Elfman. But I can't work out why exactly this song, more than any of the others, reminds me of The Nightmare Before Christmas. If you're able to pinpoint that, please feel free um, to tell me. But either way, I, you know, I ended up really thoroughly enjoying it. And needless to say, Day Of, the Banana Boat song from Harry Belafonte, is brilliant. And this is one of the most perfect scenes in all of cinema history. I, I, I don't know if everybody will agree with that, but it's certainly hailed as one of the most comedic and fascinating, and I absolutely love it. And it's just so perfectly placed. Yes, in the soundtrack, it is great, but you do need that scene to accompany it, to enjoy it within the context of Beetlejuice. On its own, though, fantastic song. Beetle Snake, I love. Um, the little rattle sounds without the on-screen action is quite, quite eerie, quite, certainly very ominous. Um, would you recognise that it's supposed to kind of emulate this sandworm, rattlesnakey kind of thing? Maybe, maybe, yeah. I, I certainly like this one better with the on-screen action to accompany it. With Sold, I don't have that many thoughts. In fact, I'm pretty indifferent. Kind of the same with the flyer and, and Lydia's pep talk. It's pretty good. But there wasn't any specific thought that jumped to me. With the incantation, I love how teasing and tantalising this one is. It, it gives a little and then it halts and then it gives a little more. Never really sure what kind of energy it's building up to. Never really sure where it's going to go or how it's going to conclude. Will it be triumphant? Will it fall flat in a kind of anticlimactic, pleasingly anticlimactic way? Um, that's kind of oxymoronic, but you know what I mean. And I really enjoy this one a lot. Same with Lydia Strikes a Bargain. The name for this one is perfect. The strikes in the name is so perfectly echoed in the strikes of the strings. It goes perfectly. Obviously, if I didn't know the name of it, it wouldn't be quite so brilliant. But I do really like it. Oddly, not one of my favourite bits in the film. So the music for me, may, for me there may actually be the stronger aspect. With Showtime, as with Juno's, I feel like it started off quite slowly. And it doesn't really feel that captivating or engaging. But then the hollow, echoey circus music plays and I lose my mind. It is amazing. Absolutely love it. Laughs is... Well, the song itself didn't really engage me that much, but the way it ends with the wedding song I just thought was so... so unexpected, and kind of leaves you hanging a bit, because the next song, The Wedding, takes a little bit of time to get back to that wedding music and those wedding bells and it's i mean obviously when you've got the on-screen action quite different experience but when you're just listening to it it's it's very intriguing and thought-provoking and leaves you wanting to know what happens and once it is incorporated and um, the wedding bells are incorporated with this it's magical penultimate we have the aftermath which is so much more positive and upbeat than you'd think. Which is, as I've said, a running theme with this. Things are dark, but also very happy. And that's just the, the tone of the film, and I absolutely love it. Um, and certainly with the aftermath, a title like that, you wouldn't expect anything so chirpy and fun as this. Uh, and I absolutely, I just love it. Um, the aftermath is... I think I prefer the aftermath to the end credits. The end credits kind of amalgamates everything here into a beautiful extended version of itself. That was, you know, poor diction on my part. But I think it kind of concludes the album really well. But I do prefer the aftermath as a kind of concluder, if you like. 
But being a big fan of Danny Elfman's music, being addicted to Tim Burton, and having Beetlejuice as one of my top five films of all time, maybe top ten, there are a lot of great films out there. I love it so much, and this album is amazing. I would say watch the film before listening to this, because I think a lot of the, the visuals really do add something. And and obviously that it was written with that in mind. Um, but there are certain soundtracks that have a very different experience when you listen to them without any visuals. But this one, I feel, is definitely enhanced by the on-screen. Either way, absolutely love it. If for whatever reason you haven't seen Beetlejuice, please watch it. I promise you will, without question, absolutely love it. <laughs>